So um, I have. A, I thought there was one part that you really covered a beautiful, a new direction that I had never thought of. So you're saying even if one is feeling vulnerable, if one is patient, patient for and bide bides one's time uh, for things to just flower when they will. There is hope that uh, something good might come out of even vulnerability. Besides the fact, of course, it makes us humble, which is something that you said earlier. Uh, if you doubt yourself, you uh, you cross question your own premises and you try and find out newer, deeper meanings, and sometimes stumble upon truths that could challenge your earlier truths. Yes, absolutely. But my question to you is. Uh, do you want to delve a bit on how patience helps uh, if one is feeling vulnerable? Say, for example, if I'm, if you are vulnerable about, say, uh, money, like you talked about, uh, it's something that we've all been vulnerable, I think, in the last two years, no matter which yeah. field we belong to, unless we are uh, rich capitalists. <laughs> think, except for a very small percentage of people all over the world, I think most of us have been worried about uh, how things are going to come to be? How are we going to pay our EMIs? Or how do you how do you be patient in a time like this? I am actually cross questioning you on this. How and what should I uh, think about when I am being patient about something like this? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, mm, being patient is uh, very good, if not virtue. It's also practically useful uh, in the sense uh, being patient comes slowly by, uh, I mean, it's, it's a sort of a wisdom in the sense, uh, I, I don't know if I learned it or, uh, or uh, I deliberately tried, it could be a combination of both and things like that. But uh, one is enriched by experience of observation of how things happen in, uh, uh, with others. At the same time, reading. I mean, uh, much. I mean, uh, somewhere in one of the talks, I was uh, you were talking uh, about quotes. Uh, so I, I, as a kid, also used to write down quotes from newspapers and magazines and things like that. I felt it was kind of a uh, essence of something that a writer or an author uh, packs it into a tight essence of what his life or his seasons in life and things like that. So reading and watching, observing makes you a little more uh, wiser or intelligent. If you open your eyes, you will know how others have dealt with uh, situations that I might be in. Uh, in that sense, uh, if you're open, I, if I'm open, I will learn from others as much as others might learn from me and things like that. So uh, the fact that one, if one is practical enough to uh, balance this both, what I what interests me, something that interests me can actually uh, uh, make me calmer. At the same time, if I if I'm able to honor others' wishes, uh, I might become a little more practical. So to that extent, uh, I can't really pinpoint on something and say, "Oh, this is what taught me patience in life." Uh, I, I'm sure it's a question here. Sorry to interrupt, but I, before I forget, okay. you did use one word, learning from experience. A term you used was huh. learning from experience. Uh, I am quite a crooked mind that way. So learning from experience basically means bad experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a quote which says, uh, you learn from bad uh, decision, you learn from bad experience. Uh, also decisions, uh, if you want to make a good decision, you actually have to make bad decisions first. I, I read this on a quote, but 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 that is actually also true in the sense, how do you know what you decided is right for you, right for others? You don't know. You decide and do things and uh, you realize either it has worked 
work for work for you or it doesn't work it doesn't work for you but uh, i can't uh, hold myself tight saying that uh, this has to be a right decision uh, it can't go uh, other way and things like that i can't control so much of what happens to me uh, the only control i have is my internal control which is uh, they they say locus of uh, locus of control is inside uh, is within you in the sense if someone provokes me if i get provoked uh, it's my decision to get provoked i'm not saying you shouldn't get provoked some things are worth being angry about but how you channelize that anger and how you deal with it is up to me to a large extent i mean uh, there's a quote by one uh, scientist uh, i think pascal it says if you sit in a room quietly you, you can actually probably solve all the problems that you have in the sense uh, if i ponder over uh, the things that happen to me or the things that uh, i was uh, exposed to whether it is good bad ugly whatever it is if i'm able to reflect upon it and uh, uh, realize for myself uh, whether it is worth uh, racking my brains or uh, uh, sulking or uh, feeling angry uh, over time you realize that some things are worth worth it some things are not worth uh, giving your time or uh, attention uh, but uh, as a creative professional sometimes you do also uh, kind of waver and uh, go into uh, aspects that may not be useful but as i said decisions or uses are best found out by experience uh, and one question right there uh, what about the disappointment that one has to live with so for example it's very easily said by you that if somebody is provoked me uh i need not get provoked or i need to ponder over things but sometimes you are deeply disappointed you invested a lot of time you invested a lot of money attention in developing something and people do not seem to be um uh, i even with something like the values workshop which i have been trying to build as a social cause and get people to talk about values i cannot deny that there have been days when it's been very disappointing to see that people are not uh, serious enough about sharing this or subscribing or liking or just sending a note if they've liked it or disliked it or um ha huh. so my i covered it at least in my head uh, i was very clear that why are you doing this i asked myself the question and then it became huh. and i am doing this because it makes me happy to put out something worthwhile out there so the sense yes. of was how did the disappointment bit but as a general thing i i want to ask you when disappointment hits us first it's not easy to it's a poison you don't want to drink it <laughs> why would you want to be happily disappointed so what do you have to say to that uh no uh, of course it is not easy uh, to face disappointment uh, but once at least for me i realized that it's part of life uh, it's part of life i mean there's one quote which says uh, fall uh, eight times stand up ninth time something yeah. to that effect in the sense in the sense uh, failure disappointment happens to everyone uh, even the best of uh, individuals face disappointment and uh, it might vary in uh, uh, quality quantity uh, uh, or the situation it it might vary uh, a billionaire will uh, uh, feel uh, disappointed if it doesn't if his business doesn't grow four folds or anything like that yeah. i might be disappointed that uh, uh, i uh, i put so much money put so much time effort but uh, i get so in one sense uh uh this is a karma of uh, uh common what should i say i mean everyone uh, no one 
is uh, uh, is so uh, indispensable or so what should i say i mean yeah uh, has to go through disappointment so, some kind or the other yeah but uh, how how i deal with it uh, actually uh, makes it worthwhile uh, uh, experience in the sense if i fail at something i could cry complain crib whatever i might do that is not useful emotions or useful feelings uh, or useful useful uh, behavior i will actually be uh, causing uh, problems to people around me uh, who are uh, uh, invested in me for reasons other than uh, money or uh, other than my satisfaction my individual satisfaction and things like that but uh, uh, and if you look at history of the things that happen uh, as happened in in uh, centuries and millennia uh you have so many examples of people uh kind of getting into so much of uh, bad shit and uh, uh traumas and uh, i mean all the uh, so much of negative uh things people yeah so uh, when i look at uh, i'm still privileged if i if i take the majority of of the population in the sense i have a home i have food i have uh, so if i rack my brain of losing something uh, i have to get that thing into perspective i mean what have i lost uh, uh, i mean uh, these startup people say that it is sunken cost never uh, uh, the money or uh, time or effort that you have lost uh, you have to fail forward in the sense it might be useful in a way which i don't know right now if i lose money or time or anything for that matter uh, i will not know like for example i could say uh, i while i was in college i spent a lot of time in theater uh, uh, mingling with friends spending time uh, losing a lot of time in listening to music or anything like that but uh, now uh, that theater experience i can use it practically in life if i face a situation where i have to act out something and kind of get out of the uh, situation or anything like that so in that sense each one finds his own way of uh, dealing with uh, uh, failure sometimes even success can be a difficult diff- difficult thing to uh, face because unless until you are not used to if you succeed overnight uh, for some reason or anything like that uh it will go to your head and you won't be able to handle you might uh, make uh, mistakes or uh, take decisions which are not healthy on the long run right so uh it's a little uh, what should i say too much of hype of uh, success as the uh, pursuit which uh, is the noblest or is the always uh, wanted of kind of a thing uh failure has a lot of value in the sense you can learn more from failure than you, than you can ever learn from success i guess